When does our angel begin to take charge of us? When does that angel begin to guard us? I think most people, if you just ask that question, they would say, at the moment of conception. Very interestingly, St. Thomas teaches that the angel is not assigned to a human being at conception because while an infant is in his or her mother's womb, the mother's guardian angel also guards the infant in her womb. That's a very beautiful idea. And that at birth, we are assigned a guardian angel at the moment of our birth. And that's true for every human being, Christians, non-Christians. Obviously, a baby who's born is not baptized yet. So the unbaptized receive a guardian angel, Muslims, Hindus, any religion, any person, any human being born is given a guardian angel. St. Thomas teaches. Hey there, everybody. I hope that everything is okay with all of you. And if it isn't, I pray that you will find strength in God to go through your difficult times. In this video, I'd like to speak a little bit about the angelic doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas. Now in the past, I made a lot of videos about Father Chad Ripperger and Father Vincent Lampert speaking about the angels and their nature. But if you pay a little more attention, a lot of the times you will hear them referring to St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor. For those of you who might not be quite familiar with St. Thomas Aquinas, especially for non-Catholics, Aquinas wrote extensively during his lifetime, producing one of the most foundational texts for Catholic theology called the Summa Theologiae. In it he answers a variety of questions that were raised in his time, and his responses continue to be used today in defense of Catholic doctrine. In the records of his canonization, many different witnesses who knew St. Thomas at different points in his life remarked about his evidently high degree of purity and chastity. The angel's gift preserved St. Thomas from sexual temptation and bestowed upon him an enduring purity that ennobled all his thoughts and actions. Over his lifetime, St. Thomas's conduct revealed that he had indeed received a special grace of chastity and purity, a grace that he is now ready to share with others through the communion of saints. Now, St. Thomas, of course, is called the angelic doctor. You might know that. He's the angelic doctor, precisely because he, of all of the theologians of uh, the history of our church, has really articulated in the most precise and thorough way the doctrine of the angels. Our angels doing this kind of mediation here right in our intellect and our will. What might that look like? Well, have you ever had your telephone ring and you know before you even look at the screen or answer the phone who's on the other end of that phone? Has that ever happened to you? Or you walk into a room, a crowded room, and you know that you have to just go talk to somebody. Or let's say that you're having a conversation, maybe a difficult conversation, at, with your family or at the office and there are words coming out of your mouth and you don't know where they're coming from because you didn't premeditate those words and you can't believe almost that you're saying what you're saying. Has that ever happened to you? Now, we might, and I think very often we do, chalk all of that up to some kind of coincidence. But in fact, that's probably not coincidental at all. And St. Thomas, according to this doctrine of the way that the angelic spirits are informing material things, would say that, no, this is not coincidental at all. This is precisely the interface between the angelic world and our lives. So before we go any further, what I hope to achieve through this video is to share with you a little bit more of the angelic nature and the hidden ministry of the guardian angels, according to St. Thomas Aquinas. There is no doubt there will be voices who disagree with what is said, but it's entirely up to you. I'm not here to sell anything, but to share with you what the church teaches and also to show you that people like Father Chad Ripperger is not making things up by themselves. Sometimes, I find it bewildering that people are so quick to dismiss the saints and the early church fathers especially on tradition and yet not taking the time to properly study the writings of these men who form the basis of our Christian faith today. There is an angel which governs blue whales. There is one angel which governs all the little uh, blackbirds that are fly, or the, the swallows you see swan, fly, flying around here. There's one for the whole species because one angel is so powerful in its, the perfection of its intellect, it can very easily govern a whole species. So 
if that same trend were to continue, then there would be one angel for the whole human race. One angel is enough to govern the whole human race. So this remarkable fact that because of the dignity that is ours as human creatures, human beings, each of us gets his or her own angel. St. Gregory of Nyssa expounds clearly that we're kind of suspended between these powers of light and darkness. Listen to what Gregory of Nyssa says connecting this truth about this spiritual warfare to our guardian angel. St. Gregory of Nyssa writes, After our nature had fallen in sin, we were not abandoned in our fall by God. But one angel, one of the beings who have an incorporeal nature, was set up to aid the life of each of us. The destroyer of our nature, in his turn, did just the same by sending us an evil, pernicious angel to the detriment of human nature. So in a way, we have a guardian angel and we have a guardian demon. That might sound kind of terrifying, but it's true, according to the fathers of the church. There's something interesting shared by Father Chad Ripperger about the demons. But before I get to that, let me just share with you about the angelic hierarchies, which will be relevant to what Father Ripperger shared later in this video. There are three angelic hierarchies, and each hierarchy has three orders, and all the heavenly spirits of all hierarchies and orders are called angels, and thus the term angel is common and generic. The following hierarchies and orders exist among the angels. The highest hierarchy includes the orders of seraphim, cherubim, thrones, while the middle hierarchy includes the orders of dominations, virtues, powers, and finally the lowest hierarchy includes principalities, archangels, angels. And so after the end of this bodily world, the angelic orders will continue to exist, but their offices will not be altogether the same as they now are, for they will then no longer need to help human beings to save their souls. By the gifts of grace, human beings can merit glory in a degree that makes them equal to the angels in each of the orders. Therefore, human beings who get to heaven are taken into the angelic orders. But these human beings remain human beings. They are not turned into angels. <clears throat> At a certain point, I managed to get him to command him and tell me who he was. And he said, um, it, well, first I told him to command me, what is your original name? I already knew what the name was that, do, that Satan had assigned. Because Satan always assigns a pejorative name to them. And he does it for two reasons. One, to humiliate them, but there's always some element of truth in the name. His, we knew that his name was the small one, was his name, that Satan had given. And the reason being is, is because when he fell, he was placed in hell at the bottom of the heap in order to reduce his stature. Because at one point I called him the little one. He's like, no, it's not little, it's small. I'm like, what's the difference? That, you know, because in English it doesn't mean a whole, that doesn't mean, and he says it has to do with stature. And stature basically means that who you, where you're at in this pecking order in hell, because that determines how much power you have, right? And how much you can mete it out on other people and how much suffering you're going to go through, because the people at the bottom, it's even worse than the people at the top. So this small one, uh, he said to me, he said, I was the angel that was created to head the hierarchy of angels that was created for Our Lady. Now, and at one point, I said, apologize to all of them for falling. He says, that's going to take a while. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, there's an awful lot of them. But it basically means if she's going to be queen, well, God's going to create angels to be her servants in that process, right? And the way he was talking about it, he's, he basically talked about how there was this entire hierarchy within the hierarchy of angels that was created in order just to execute her commands, that he'd created this. And his job was to have this communication with her in that process so that he would be the one who she would communicate the commands to because in, 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 uh, in heaven, the hierarchy of angels have a very distinctive structure. The guys at the top receive the knowledge and information from God. They then communicate about what his will and intentions are. That's communicated to the guys in the middle who then oversee the process of the guys on the bottom executing it. So it's literally a, it's a hierarchic structure, but it's also, if you look at it, it's also the type of thing, it's a military structure, right, when you look at it. So in this particular case, one of the reasons Our Lady is so powerful, the reason that when she shows up, as soon as she shows up, it's over, 
Literally, she, when she would show up in cases, where she was shown up in about 60 to 70 percent of the cases that I've worked on, when she shows up, she doesn't even say anything most of the time. She just shows up, and then Nima's like, whoop, out. There's just no waiting around, they just bug out, right? And so for any of you who would like to learn more about our guardian angels or the angels in general, you can read what the early church fathers wrote about them, what St. Thomas Aquinas wrote about them, and the next time you're listening to someone like Father Ripperger, you'll be able to understand more clearly whatever is shared by him. And again, before I end this video, I'd like to say thanks so much everybody for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate your continuous support, and if there are any subjects you'd like me to cover, please do let me know in the comments down below.